Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Join Alaska Public Media on Friday, April 17th from 12 to 1 p.m. for a screening of the home stretch, chat, and conversation about homeless teens. More at alaskapublic.org. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us here for another edition of Alaska Weather. On uh, the satellite imagery from yesterday, we had a front here pushing northward and eastward across the Gulf of Alaska, bringing the gale force winds and rain into the southeast coast and the gale force winds and storm force winds into the north Gulf Coast, and that wrapping back around into Kodiak Island. And then more clouds gathering down in this area associated with the upper trough and the cold air aloft, bringing a bunch of showers in across the area. You can see the front today moved into Canada and breaking up by the mountains there. And then that area of showers rotating mostly up here to the north and into the coast, North Gulf Coast. Yakutat picking up over an inch of rain in the last 24 hours, actually ending at four o'clock this morning. And Kodiak had about two thirds of an inch, but you can see improving down in this area now. And not too bad here from the Southwest Coast, uh, Northern Bristol Bay, up through the interior, a uh, fair amount of sunshine today, then back into the clouds there along the Arctic Coast and North Slope, but uh, areas over Cot around Kotzebue Sound, not too bad. Kivlina, clear skies this afternoon for example, and it looks like some breaks out there over the Pervilof Islands. Uh, this, the ice edge right in here and uh, south of that looks pretty clear, actually clear up over the ice edge itself. Then this is the next system bringing the increasing wind, rain, and snow into the Aleutians spreading in toward ADAC this afternoon. On the chart, there's a position of this next system out here uh, 10 o'clock this morning. It was roughly in about that position. Here we can see the front has pushed northward well into Canada here, breaking up, really not doing much up here over the northern interior, uh, just a few clouds and that's about it. Could be a few isolated flurries there back out to the northwest. But uh, as, as this trough came on short, a few isolated thunderstorms developed along the central coast of the Panhandle earlier this morning with a uh, fair amount of showers heaviest up here along the northern areas, but they extended down all the way to Dixon entrance, low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska now taking a turn pulling actually back to the north and we'll move over the Kenai Peninsula tonight and up over the southern Susitna Valley tomorrow saying near Squintna and uh, <clears throat> the clear sunny conditions back to the west and north and uh, pretty brisk winds out here up to uh, 30, 35 miles an hour Cape Newenham and then that carrying the snow showers down to the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians but winds uh, dropping off now with high pressure moving in as this uh, system pulls, weakens and the whole pattern shifts to the east a little bit. Tonight, that low center now up over the Kenai Peninsula, so increasing chances of rain and snow here across the area. And uh, even in the areas that haven't seen much, say from Anchor Point up to uh, across Kenai, Anchorage and Palmer, there's a chance of seeing some moisture increase here tonight and especially tomorrow. Another band of moisture will move right up and keep the numerous showers going along all of the southeast coast, more of a mixed condition depending on your elevation here along the North Gulf Coast and then the Kenai Peninsula. Isolated sh snow showers scattered around uh, the west central interior here, but not too bad, staying pretty nice up over the northwest of Brooks Range. Just some variable clouds. Winds will remain light up along the Arctic coast. And this low center slipping southward or slipping eastward to the south. That'll kick the east winds up, but shouldn't be too much in the way of any moisture with that. And uh, high pressure here for light winds for the Perbolofs, the Alaska Peninsula. Diminishing winds for Bristol Bay and along the coast here. We see real slack gradient all the way up into the Chukchi Sea. And then for Thursday, still a trough moving through and a lot of shower activity going on along the southeast coast. But getting a little bit less here, but uh, still another couple of bands to move in. Low pressure up over Squintness. So again, most areas of south central Alaska will see probably at some point in the day tomorrow either rain, snow, or a mixture of both. That's good for the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, areas into the Copper River Basin, mostly over the mountainous terrain, the Wrangell Mountains, and again, the showers over the Panhandle, 
And this system, again, the easterly flow here picking up, uh, so the wind's increasing for the eastern Aleutians there, back to the west, uh, diminishing off in the colder air. Precipitation mostly in the form of snow out that way. Uh, fair conditions here over the southwest part of the state, and mostly sunny skies again northward to the Notak Valley, western north slope. Just a few clouds there in the areas of fog along the Arctic coast with winds light from the east and northeast, 5 to 15 or 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then for Friday, we'll see this system develops into quite a pretty good frontal boundary here, or a wave develops along the frontal boundary coming northward. So that's going to put some heavy wind and rain into Kodiak Island as early as late tomorrow night, and definitely by midday Friday, you'll be into the uh, strong winds with rain heavy at times. And that'll be shifting northward across uh, the Barren Islands into Kamshak Bay, and the uh, moisture increases again, showers here, mostly in the upslope areas of the Kenai Peninsula, western Prince William Sound, and then kind of a mixture of conditions back here to the west in the colder air, and a little bit farther to the west, it'll all be in the form of snow showers with the northerly winds out that way. And we have a trough here through the interior with uh, north and west of that trough axis actually acting as an Arctic boundary. That's where the uh, areas of light, the scattered snow showers or flurries will be. Pretty fair to the south of that. Look for a mostly sunny day for the Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, even into the Copper River Basin, a partly and mostly sunny day. Even though we have high pressure in over the southeast coast, there'll still be a few lingering showers, but there'll be some partial clearing as well, but definitely a drier day than what you've seen the last couple of days out that way. Southwest coast here getting pretty windy but dry. Those uh, northeast winds kicking up to 30, possibly as high as 35 miles an hour, even stronger over Bristol Bay there in advance of that frontal boundary, and then much lighter for the Alaska Peninsula with the front having moved northward. Temperatures this afternoon at 3 p.m. Lower to mid 40s here over the southeast coast, 43 at Juneau, up to 47 over at uh, Stewart, for example, and then lower 40s for the North Gulf Coast, 41 Yakutat, 43 at Cordova, 44 in Anchorage, Kenai, 39 Homer, about the same there at Kodiak with 40 degrees, 44 down at Akiak, and Northway, 40, lower 40s for the Tanana Valley. A little cooler out to the west, Tanana 37 and 37 at Minchumina, but uh, McGrath pushed over 40 degrees this afternoon, sleep noon at 37. Up to the north, 19 at Arctic Village, Fort Yukon though up to 36. Bettles about the same, mid 30s and 18 at Anatuvik. And then up along the Arctic coast, again, some areas still below zero at 3 p.m., minus three at Point Lay and at Desuk there, south southwest of Barrow at minus two. Two above though at Wainwright and five, Kaktovik, Dead Horse and Barrow. Also at Kotzebue and at uh, Deering, zero at Tin City and 13 at Nome, 14 at Golovin, 14 also there at uh, St. Michael. 12 at St. Mary's and 18 above at McCoriuk, 23 in Bethel and the 27 at Anvik. Out to the west, uh, upper 30s for Adak and Atka, Shimia just 34 this afternoon, 32 in Unalaska, and right around 30 here for the Pribilofs with St. George at 29, St. Paul seeing 30 degrees, 21 at Cape Newingham, 31 at Cold Bay, but uh, rising up to near 40 as you move northeast into Bristol Bay. Lows tonight. Upper 30s and lower 40s for the Panhandle. Lower to mid 30s here, south central Alaska, out along the coast, a little closer to 40. 20s, teens and 20s up north of the mountains in the Tanana Valley, but uh, Eagles forecast down to 16. Near zero along the Brooks Range and below zero here over the northwest interior, north slope and Arctic coast, all forecast in that uh, five to 10 below range, maybe a little bit chillier, but not too much. And then on the plus side of zero here for St. Lawrence Island and the Yukon Delta coast, uh, 20s for Bristol Bay, mid 20s for the Pribilofs, and uh, lower to mid 30s for the Aleutians, but on Alaska dropping down to 29, 24 there at Cold Bay. For the highs tomorrow, uh, single numbers for the Arctic coast, much in the North Slope, same thing here for uh, the North Attack Valley, Kotzebue Sound, Seward Peninsula, South Coast though, Nome should reach a high of four, uh, 15, 14 at Savunga, and uh, mid to upper 40s here for the southeast interior, as well as south central Alaska. A little cooler because of the uh, increase in clouds and precipitation of that low coming up over the area there. So southeast coast though, mid to upper 40s, not too bad. Flying weather, IFR along and, along and east of the western Alaska range, down across southern Cook Inlet, 
All in the North Gulf Coast will see IFR at some point in the day tomorrow. And actually, this should extend in over western Prince William Sound to Whittier and Portage as well. Marginal VFR for the northern panhandle looks like VFR for areas on down to the south. The interior, a lot of VFR conditions forecast for tomorrow with marginal VFR areas of along the eastern Arctic coast and to a lesser extent here on the west side. And then areas of marginal conditions all the way down the coastline through the Bering Strait, St. Nunavak Island from St. Lawrence Island along the coast and a big area of uh, marginal VFR mostly west of the Perbloffs down to the Aleutians. Looks like most of this IFR will stay south of the chain but getting pretty close there. Could see a little bit of that sneak up into the eastern Aleutians late tomorrow afternoon and evening. Anatuvik looks VFR tomorrow. Adigan, same forecast. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, but lower conditions on the eastern entrances. That's probably where the IFR will be. Better conditions higher to the west. And for rainy, look for marginal VFR, occasionally IFR here on the eastern entrance. And for windy, marginal VFR at times. Isabel and Mentasta both starting out VFR and then coming down to marginal VFR. First at Isabel, then Mentasta in the afternoon for Tanita marginal conditions, Portage IFR, Chilkoot and White looking marginal. Checking the freezing levels here, 2,000 feet along the North Gulf Coast and then down across the Panhandle, 4,000 feet down actually south of the Queen Charlotte's and at the surface here right along the coastline once again and then up into the uh, Gulf or up into the Western Bering Sea here but 2,000 feet struggling to make it to Shimia or make it to the uh, Central Aleutians. And for icing, occasional isolated moderate stuff here along the North Gulf Coast. And that will extend down into the Panhandle tomorrow with a few more bands of showers moving through. So be of the uh, mixed to rhyme variety here, mostly below about 11 to 12,000 feet down to the freezing levels. Same thing for South Central Alaska. And another band with uh, the heavier stuff staying south of the chain, but the areas from Amchitka Island there, Kiska, all the way over to Nikolsky, you will see a chance of some rime icing, mostly below about the 10 to 12,000 foot level there. And the upper level wind flow chart, the strongest flow of the jet stream, actually south of the entire area here, getting a little close, coming up across the Queen Charlotte's and Dixon entrance. Again, that southwest flow, keep those showers going in toward the southeast coast and about 30 knots, so not a real strong flow, but from the southwest to northeast, and that sort of supports a precipitation pattern for the eastern areas of Cook Inlet on up, again, as I mentioned from Anchor Point on up to Palmer Scene, better chances of some precipitation. 9,000 foot wind flow chart, south to north, 25 to 35 knots here for the North Gulf Coast, lighter down on the southern panhandle, not too strong anymore of a northerly component as this uh, Wind flow shifts inland, just 10 to 15 knots coming down. And then the stronger winds is that uh, system, developing system complex brings uh, easterlies 40 knots to the eastern central Aleutian areas, but light and variable out here under high pressure and some weak lows out over the Bering Sea, especially the northern areas. Light east winds up along the Arctic coast. And for 3,000 feet, northeasterlies 5 to 10 knots, northerlies at about 15 through the Bering Strait. <clears throat> excuse me, and then easterlies 30 to 45, or yeah, 35 to 40 knots here. Strongest winds will be south of the chain where the 50 knotter winds will be. Then the low center coming up over the Kenai Peninsula tomorrow over Cook Inlet, just about southwest flow, 25 knots. Still have that southwest and northeast flow into the southeast coast. Lighter easterlies here through the interior, zero to 15 knots, or zero to 10 in the north, about five to 15 through this area, and then taking a turn to the north, but staying rather weak. And for turbulence, maybe some light to isolated moderate chop below 6 to 8,000 feet from Connect Turnigan Arm eastward across Prince William Sound over to maybe Yakutat. Otherwise, pretty smooth for the Panhandle, pretty smooth from the Arctic coast where the winds will be light all the way down to Bristol Bay. Kodiak Island looking pretty smooth. And occasional moderate chop here from Atka Island to the, across the Fox Islands to Cape Sarachev. This whole area will be expanding northeastward. And of course, you'll be in the thick of it there, Kodiak Island day after tomorrow, actually probably late tomorrow night. And uh, early on Friday, you'll see uh, some heavier wind with that turbulence. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. One of the questions that, that always comes up is the role that the polar orbiting satellites played in understanding some of the other dynamics that we picked up in other parts of the NOAA, let's call it the NOAA system. 
uh, uh, example, uh, the 1982 83 El Nino, which to that point was perhaps the most developed El Nino that had ever been measured. Uh, clearly, we got great understanding from other satellites about what was happening uh, at the equator, or the equatorial levels. Uh, but without the knowledge of what ice cover was, what the cloud distribution was in the high latitudes, to couple with that knowledge that came from other satellites, the system would have been incomplete. Polar orbiting satellites are able to collect data from sensors placed on fixed and moving platforms, including ships, buoys, and weather balloons then transmit the data to a central processing facility for scientific analysis. The instruments also are able to determine precise locations of moving sensors, allowing wildlife managers to monitor and track transmitters placed on birds and other animals. Everything that's happening in science now is a function of time and scale. And in terms of looking, if you're looking at what's happening in the ocean, for instance, if it happens to be you want to find out something about distribution of marine mammals or fishes or something in the ocean. These are large scale problems. And you need to be able to go through and utilize the polar orbiting satellite to be able to get snapshots of all of the aspects of this so that you can look at this larger scale. The Space Environment Monitor on board today's Tyros can detect the arrival of energetic particles generated by our sun. This information is used to predict the onset of solar storms that can severely disrupt Earth's communication systems. The satellites uh, do other functions also. They carry search and rescue uh, facilities, and those facilities have helped save over 10,000 lives. Um, that's a lot of people. It's a wonderful facility to have. I'm a sailor, so I like the idea that there's a satellite up there that can help me in a wide variety of ways. And I'm sure other people who use the ocean, whether it's commercial fishermen or recreational sailors, feel the same way. Pose sensors are able to assign numerical values to observed conditions, converting environmental factors into quantitative data that can be used for numerical weather forecasting, wind field and ocean current analysis, agricultural frost warnings, severe weather prediction, and research. No storm can approach the coasts of the United States without being observed. The storms approaching the United States before the onset of satellites were literally a mystery. We had a few ship observations, but that was about all. We had a few aircraft observations, but we were not able to define the character of the storms, how strong they were, how fast they were moving. With satellites, it suddenly became possible to observe storms wherever they were in the world. I wasn't involved in the first Tyros. Uh, and I think uh, the people who uh, pulled that all together uh, really uh, should be proud of their accomplishments. It was a great success. And uh, the follow-ons uh, have outlived their design life by many years, which uh, means the American people really got their money's worth out of that program. From the very beginning, the scientists from the U.S. Weather Bureau were very excited about the possibilities of the new satellite. In fact, so excited that the first administrator of NASA told them to tone down their rhetoric a little bit. But in fact, the satellite proved to be much more effective and useful than was ever thought. So now as we celebrate 40 years of the Tyro satellite, we can celebrate the innovation, the new ideas, and this new generation of satellites that we have and look forward to universal benefits from all the data that will come from this new satellite. A new generation of scientists and visionaries have been inspired to carry this work forward into the new century, looking to fulfill the vision of universal benefits for all of the world's population.
Welcome back with lower pressure in over the Yukon tomorrow. South winds increasing to 30 knots with seas about six feet there for Northern Lynn Canal. For Stevens Passage, Frederick Sound southerly is at about 25 with five foot seas and then Clarence Strait forecast south 20 seas running four to eight feet. Small craft advisories out along most of the coastline from a southwest direction for the central and southern coast to south 20 to 25 knots weakest on the north coast but seas running 13 to 17 feet. And then for Friday, uh, lighter winds here, west-southwest at about 15 here, the entire stretch of the coastline, a little more subtly there on the north coast. But notice the seas coming down uh, from those higher values tomorrow to eight to nine feet here out along the coast, even over the inside waters, uh, less uh, wind and slighter sea, south 15 for Stevens Passage, central inside areas here, southeast at 10 and winds coming down to 20 knots in the afternoon with seas at four feet for Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay. And for Cook Inlet tomorrow, light variable winds at five knots, southwest 15 south of the Forelands. For Kamishak Bay, west winds 20 knots, that same forecast for the Barren Islands. And southwest 20 here across Kodiak Island and southerlies at about 20 knots for the North Gulf Coast. Southeast at 20 for Prince William Sound, seas running four to eight feet. Then for Friday, more southeasterly and pretty brisk here on Friday here for the waters around Kodiak Island, even Shelikoff Strait, northeast 35, seas 10 feet, southeast 40 on the east side there with 18 foot seas. Barren Islands, southeasterly is coming up to 40 knots. Gales right into Kamishak Bay, Augustine Island. Southeast 20 though, so lighter up there over Southern Cook Inlet, Northern Cook Inlet, southeast at about 10 with three foot seas. And uh, small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast from the south southeast. Seas there running seven to nine feet and southeast at 15 for Prince William Sound. For Bristol Bay tomorrow, a light northwest breeze here with seas at about three feet southwest of Kodiak. Westerly is about the same, just 10 knots. Southeast increasing to 20 knots in the afternoon on the Pacific side of the peninsula, while the north side here will see easterlies at about 15 with five foot seas. Then for Friday, uh, actually overnight tomorrow night, that front rolls through that area, but uh, southeast 35 knots, still some gales coming down in the afternoon to 35 knots here from the southeast for the water southwest of Kodiak Island, east 30 for Bristol Bay, northeast 35 knots with 13 foot seas for the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. And out to the Aleutians, out in the western areas, north to northeast, 15 to 20 knots out in this area. But uh, for the central Aleutians, 25 small, well, small craft advisors on the Bering Sea side of these zones on the Pacific side, that's where all the gales will be from the east, southeast, 35 to 40 knots for the Fox Islands, south of Adakanatka, more northeast at 35. Seas running 15 to 20 feet there on the Pacific side and about 10 to 13 feet on the Bering Sea side. For the uh, Friday outlook, uh, north 30 here, so picking them up out over the far western zones, 25 knots in between there and Adak and Atka. Northerly gales in store for those two locations on Friday. Northeast 35 to 40 knots, so pretty brisk out of the northeast for the Fox Islands Friday. For the southwest coast, northeast at 10 here, about the entire stretch of the coastline. Another light wind day for St. Lawrence Island, and the wind's coming up to about 20 knots for the Pervolofs tomorrow, east 15 for the northern Bering Sea, St. Matthew Island zone. And then for Friday, looks like gales for sure into the Pervolofs from the northeast, 35 knots, even stronger for St. George Island, northeast at about 30 knots here all along the southwest coast, and northerly 20 knots for St. Lawrence Island, northeast 30 there, especially uh, west of St. Matthew Island, there'll be probably some gales out in this area from the northeast. And for the Arctic coast there on the west side, wet easterlies at 10 knots, pretty light northeasterlies here all the way over to Demarcation Point, just northeast to 10 in the forecast, northwest at uh, 10 for the areas from uh, Cape Thompson to uh, Cape Beaufort, and then south of Cape Thompson to Wales, northwest at 15. And those will pick up a little bit on Friday, call it 20 knots from the same direction. Northerly is 15 from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort and for the western Arctic coast, east at 15. And then the central Beaufort Sea coastline, northeast at 10, same thing for the areas around Barrow. And northeast at 10 all the way to Demarcation Point. For tonight, low pressure 
weakening and pulling up to the Kenai Peninsula. It's looking for rain and snow showers numerous along the coastal areas and a little more scattered over the inland areas, but some areas haven't seen much. You'll pick up a better chance of seeing something. Numerous showers for the Panhandle, more rolling in behind that trough axis, but fair up over the interior. Just a lingering snow shower or snow flurry right through this area here and some high pressure showing up here just north of the Alaska Peninsula. So that'll shut the winds off, kind of move them inland a little bit there. And there's the next storm coming across the Aleutians. And that'll bring some rain and snow into some areas with an increase in the easterly winds. Weak low staying out over the northwest Bering Sea. And uh, low pressure moving to near Squinton. So, <clears throat> excuse me, areas of rain and snow here. Again, better chances in the areas I haven't seen much here for South Central Alaska. Just about all areas of South Central Alaska will see some type of precipitation here over the next 24 to 36 hours. Still showers over the panhandle. And then those uh, really scatter out and almost end on Friday with this next big system. All the heavy wind and rain into Kodiak Island spreading northward into the Kenai Peninsula, southern Kenai Peninsula and Kamishak Bay with Increase in winds here from the east-northeast across southwest Alaska, but staying dry. And some flurries or snow showers on the north side of that trough axis through the interior. And with that, we'll end today's show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be back here again tomorrow at 530. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company.